right now. Okay. Hello. Welcome to the Comedians of Wrestling podcast. Um, I'm here uh, with Aaron Finnerty, the First Lady. What up? Hello. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, this podcast, first off, coming out a little late this week. We were kind of debating how to handle the podcast this week, given the state of America um, and the state of the world, really. Um, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it felt weird to just do, just act like, oh, we're all just watching wrestling and nothing's happening. Because uh, we're having a moment, a historical moment. And, um, yeah, I had went on my other podcast, uh, The Damn Black Attack, and had a, and had voiced my support for the Black Lives uh, Matter movement. And, um, and uh, coming on here, me and Aaron, in solidarity, essentially, uh, to do the same thing, really. Yeah. Uh, I think that I, I think that yes, we're not a political podcast. I understand that, um, and I think that I do think on this podcast we kind of uh, I, 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 we I think we pride ourselves on some element of like, hey, life's stressful. This is what podcasts are all about. Like, life is stressful, and listen to this on your commute to work, and don't think about how commuting to work sucks. Right. Right. You're working at the hoagie shop. Right. You're working uh, all day at your job and and it's stressful and you're tired. You hit that like two thirty slump or whatever. And you're like, you know, you're like, well, I'll put on a podcast. Oh, that, that banged out an hour because these guys are just with me, hanging out with me while I do this job. I've been there um, and I, 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 I enjoy being there for you guys in that capacity to turn your brain off a moment. Uh, for a moment, but I also don't, I've said this on my other podcast, which is, I don't really believe in, in, um, distractions and diversions. And I think that's partially how we got to this moment in time now, um, uh, where, uh, we turn too, too much of a blind eye to some truths that we know, uh, our reality and yeah, so in that way, I think it's important right now for this podcast to actually acknowledge what is going on. Um, and for the platform that we have here, let people know how we feel, especially if you trust, uh, if you, you know, you trust us in your ears uh, every week. So uh, maybe you'll trust where we stand on this. And yeah, um, police brutality is a major issue uh it's a major issue in america for my entire life i mean it's not this is not like a new this is not a new thing when i when i first when i was moving to la the first thing i thought of was like la riots right like right. i was you know um i was like oh yeah the, it, it, it sounds silly but it's like that's how prominent these issues are not to mention all the with the advent of social media, uh, all the videos we see, including right. the one that always sticks with me, and I said it on the other podcast, was the the murder of Philando Castile, literally on Facebook Live streaming, you know? And so I think turning a blind eye to this stuff is, it's irresponsible, you know? Uh, and I think we've all been doing it for too long because it's it's comfortable and it's time to be uncomfortable. So let's have an uncomfortable um, discussion and we'll continue to have them um, when, when we see uh, fit. I, I, I think that, <laughs> I think that the main thing to, for my thought, my, my main thought here is where I feel like this country's starting to be like divided and whatnot has to do with the, how these protests are going down. But the most important thing to understand is that most people, most people are peacefully protesting, right? Yes, I mean, most people. Most, and like a high, high percentage. We're talking about 99.9. I mean, I don't have the actual percentage, but just think of it logically, right? Uh, you know people who are protesting. You, you have Facebook friends. You see 
uh, celebrities on their Instagram going out there? Are these people who are normally throwing bricks through windows? Right. Well, you know, also, if anyone listening lives in any major city or even some towns, like smaller towns, you can just look outside and see that there's peaceful protests happening. And right. many of the protests are, you know, in conjunction with the police. Like they went down Hollywood Boulevard in front of my apartment here um, down the block and it was peaceful. They were sending a right. message and you can see how many people there are, like the volume. And yeah, I, I, I think it's very safe to say that the majority of people who are protesting and participating are doing it peacefully. Yeah, and so if you see any news outlets you know, that are, and, and to be honest, even let's, you know, let, to be honest, I'm talking about Fox News. Fox News is saying these protests are largely peaceful. You could turn on all the channels. Uh, it, everyone is in agreement, just like everyone is in agreement that the George Floyd was murdered, right? Right, right. Um, and if you want to get really uncomfortable and you really want to understand it, make sure, I, I, you know, I personally believe in, getting the information. The New York Times put out a video um, that recreates, all, from all the footage they have, recreates the entire timeline of what happened to George Floyd. And like a moment this. by moment breakdown. Right, you saw it? The video. I saw the link. I, I didn't watch it, no. Yeah, well, look, if you, it, it's seen not it easy. Enough. Yeah, no, you've seen it enough. It's easy to, it's, it's, look, you have to make that judgment for yourself. I'm not telling you to watch it. I tell you how I operate for myself, you know, which is yeah. like, I'm like, I need this information. I felt like watching it. I saw him speak. I saw all of his last words, which is in, in, insane to say. Um, but it, it reminds you because things get out of hand and it recenters you to like what actually people are protesting about. When you watch it, you will understand exactly why people are Fill of rage why people are this is it's completely understandable so if you haven't if you haven't uh if you find yourself having having a, a conversation or, or forget about a conversation if you're watching uh the beginning of uh, uh, uh you're seeing uh pundits on tv uh, talking heads like and in the beginning like oh we all agree this thing was bad more time should be spent on that part of the conversation. You know, right. it's like, it's easy to be like, oh, we all agree there. So because we agree, it's not worth our time because we're trying to disagree. You know, that's what right. I don't understand. Let's get more into the nitty gritty of this. So focusing on just the looting and just the protesting and law and order of it is a great diversion. Um, and again, I don't believe in diversions from the actual situation, which is that Police officers are either not trained properly uh, are, or there is a, 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 a cops are not calling other cops out. We know that forever. Yes. Um, it's like the blue code or whatever you call it, you know, where it's like cops don't run on cops. Uh, and so, yeah, we, we, we have a situation here and not to mention just straight up racism. Right. right? We can't ra racism exists in society. OK. And obviously there's going to be cops who are racist. And if other cops are not going to and these are people with authority and weapons, po policing neighborhoods, literally. So if we're not going to have any if cops are not going to keep other cops in check, then that means we have unchecked racism. Not only and just other cops, but like the institution right. allows people with a track record like this individual of shooting at killing harming, you know, unnecessarily, you know, killing people to continue policing, um, then yeah, it, it goes beyond just like, oh, you're the three other guys didn't stop you. It's like this entire institution let you stay on the streets um, right. to pro quote, protect and serve uh, right. citizens. It's a broken system. So people are protesting for changing that system. And Okay, so how do we get people to stop? Because we all agree. We all want our lives to go back to normal. Normal. We all been holed up. 
not to mention, do we want people out on the street protesting when we have a, a, a virus that we have no cure for uh, right. uh, uh, <laughs> out there? No, we don't want it. So how do we stop them? Well, we have them be heard and we need systematic change. And there's been no real moment of acknowledgement from the federal government about this change. I, I, I mean, even on the state level, fine. I mean, even that uh, I don't I watch the news. We're all watching the news 24 hours a day right now. Have we seen uh, someone come out and say, we're working actively on change. We formed this committee. No. So, you know, that's the kind of, and, and maybe it'll come, but I'm saying these are the things that will stop it. Not shooting everybody. It gets people right. <laughs> shooting everybody with flash grenades, uh, uh, flash grenades, uh, Whatever, you know, I don't pepper rubber spray. Rubber bullets. Oh, right, right. Rubber bullets, which literally take people, have taken people's eyes out. It's blind, permanently blind people. Uh, they are very dangerous. You know, like I've seen some of the images of folks, young people who've taken rubber bullets and it is not, they're not beanbag. They're not like little cotton balls. You know, it's really not dangerous. Nerf guns or whatever. Yeah, like, exactly. Break skin, you know, uh, now, um, obviously, I'm not saying we, – well, uh, uh, whatever. But look, so we need some kind of systematic change, so not acknowledging that. And then, look, we have the president who is <sighs> a clown, you know? A fool, um, a total he, fool. He's a fool, an absolute fool. And, and, and to not – to be so – regardless of your politics, and I know I have right-wing listeners. I know you guys. I hear you guys. You're in the Facebook group. Do I ever censor you? You want to be right-wing? You know, you want to say your stuff? I mean, if it unless it crosses a line of hate, right? I'm not looking to agree with everyone who listens to my podcast. Who wants to listen to a podcast that's just like – Telling them what they already know, you know? That's what we're trying to learn, whatever. I, I'm, I'm glad to have people from all spectrums. We can all agree that we need a president who is looking to unify a fractured country right now. Like, and he has, and this president is showing no, and if it was, he's showing no signs of that. He's showing signs. The opposite. He's the showing opposite. signs of the opposite. Actively fanning the flames of the violence and the destruction and like the animosity that everyone has between each other it is so bad it is it's it's an it's like a performance that he's putting on for his red state whatever followers and it is there's no call for calm or unity whatsoever it is doing the exact opposite of right. that and, and so, it is scary i i turn it on and i will tell you i've never really cared about what the president's the president's never met that meant mattered that much to me in terms right. of my daily life you know yeah we Which always is, say that right like, fortunately you know fortunately i've lived in a, in it where uh, you know it's it's i've never you know not we're not like huddled around the radio like we like we were and during world war one and two trying to uh, hear what is the president going to say, you know, luck, we've been lucky in that way for a while, you know, um, you know, um, you know, whatever, look, I could go down a whole tangent on that about Iraq and whatnot, but we're not going to do that yeah. either right now because uh, he, he, even George Bush, who many people disagree with George Bush, the second George W. Bush is calling out this, rhetoric you know and yeah. so I, right now i am looking to the president for the first time in my life looking to that office to be like well we all unite around our leader our democratically elected official um this is the man who won this is the man who's here to unite it and instead what he did was the worst moment for me that i've watched live in american history okay is <laughs> He opened fire with open with uh, 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 rubber bullets, tear gas, tear gas, smoke bombs on peaceful protesters. Now, I just want to put this in, 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 in a t for a photo op, okay, in front of a church that he had no permission 
to he, he didn't even speak to the, the he didn't go in to pray it was just to hold up a bible which he didn't it even was, open the bible he just held it up next to his head like and the diocese of that church uh, you know she spoke out and said she was outraged because they did not have permission um she was outraged because he was using the bible this sacred thing to as a photo op for this message of hatred where he didn't acknowledge anything that's going on right and so the look again if you see his that moment as a moment of standing up for uh religious freedom or what or you know we have separation of church and state in this country. People have a First Amendment right, just the same way this president protects the Second Amendment right. Right? People had the right to be there. They were being. He was supposed to speak at six fifteen. Okay, so I go. Oh, the president's on, so I'm watching live. Okay, six fifteen rolls around. I'm watching the protest for a while. He doesn't speak, so I'm literally just watching in real time these protests. And I'm keeping an eye on how peaceful they are. Not only are they so peaceful, when the police would move a little bit forward, right? And I believe some were National Guard as well. Uh, hands up, right? Yes. Literally hands up. Just to show you that no one's causing it. No one's throwing a water from the back. Nothing. Nothing. And so 6.15 rolls around. 6.30 rolls around. Still nothing. He's watching the protest. Attorney General Barr comes out. He's watching from the back, and then, he, well, like, why is he watching? He's surveying. This gangster is surveying the situation, being like, how do we clear a path for the president to walk through a park? A park, by the way, Lafayette Park, which is a park that is known for protesting. It's a park where people are protesting almost 24 hours a day in some capacity. Uh, I've never, I've been to Lafayette Park. Anytime I've been to D.C., there's people there with a table demonstrating, even in, in peaceful times. People have problems with whatever president. I was there under Obama. There were people there. You know? Yes. Okay. So six. then all of a sudden, 640 rolls around. I might have my times a little off. The police just start moving forward, firing flash grenades, gas, uh, moving everybody out. They were just peacefully protesting. And simultaneously, as this is happening, the president is speaking, saying, I stand with peaceful protesters. I am your – right? Then he starts to speak. He's like, I am standing with you while he's hitting them with projectile weapons. I'm literally in split screen. Do you, do you understand? This is dictatorship behavior. In split screen, the, I'm watching kids – and kids, by the way, people are diminishing kids right now. Kids are responsible. Uh, kids, who knows what, what, what a kid means anymore? 25 and under, whatever. Kids, the youth. Kids are responsible for some of our most major movements in history. You know? So they're there. I'm watching them. Water poured on their eyes. And a diverse spectrum of people, by the way. Not just all black people. Truly, truly, it could not be more diverse, this group. Right. Uh, and so they're getting Americans pepper sprayed this so the president could walk through this park for literally a photo op trying to create his moment, right? It was literally, outrageous. He's trying to manufacture moments where people will be like, remember when he did that at the expense of the health. This is directly the health of innocent tax paying Americans who – Pay all of these officers' salaries. All of them. Yeah. You know? I mean, not only that, but it's like... And horses, by the way. Then they horses. ran at them on horses. <laughs> right. And he's just... Contra he was in real time contradicting what he was saying for this photo op. And don't get it twisted. The photo op was disgusting itself. It was a message. He stood up in front of that church. He cleared the path. You know, there's white people in the protest. There's all sorts of people, like you said. And then he stands in front of the church with his all-white posse, lily-white posse, holding this Bible. Right. Don't think for a second that that was supposed to be a message of unity. Like, look, we're standing in front of this defaced church. It was, look at how white 
my crew is. This is not for the people who are angry right now. This is for the people who already like ride with me and have my back. It right. was uh, his, outrageous. Right. And he plays to his base, which is majority, which is majority white. But also, I, you know, let's just talk about it also from just a political standpoint. Right. Mm hmm. How is this with what America looks like today? Let's just, and, and this is ugly to even talk about politics, but this is all he's doing. How is this a winning strategy to d divide? I mean, you've had President Bush, a, a Republican, a, a bunch of Republicans coming out. We've seen um, Steve King get voted out of office yesterday for his racial comments. Um, uh, uh, and, and you have Biden, who I'm going to say right now, I will. I cannot wait to vote for Joe Biden uh, in November, and I, I, I know there are some problems with Joe Biden. But let me tell you, the problems you go with Joe Biden, yeah, but he's this and this and this. With this president, it goes, your yeah buts are he's a little bit of a you know a white supremacist apologist, uh, um, I, right? He's he, a little <laughs> bit of a dictator. Is a little bit. The stuff is way, it's, way, way he, scarier. Yeah, but if he gets reelected, we run the risk of being under a complete dictatorship. Versus, yeah, but I disagree with some of his actions. Like this is truly dangerous. And yeah, enough is enough on and on 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 police brutality and and uh, sorry Aaron to cut you off I'm saying that's and, okay and also enough is we need to rally I listen I will we need to a vote not for Joe Biden unfortunately in our broken system our gerrymandered system it's rigged the system's rigged unfortunately our only hope for fixing a lot of these issues in America lies with Joe Biden now is there someone better out there who cares? It's, it's not the time. Yeah. We, we, there's no. And so I know my friends, well-intentioned, smart, brilliant friends who are posting negative things about Joe Biden. It's binary right now. This is this is the zeros and ones. We got yeah. a complete zero in the White House. It does not stand for any of the values of America, of Christianity, which he uses as a complete vanity tool. A complete uh, tool. I mean, you can look. Don't like, I'm just always mystified by folks who think that Trump is this God fearing, good, like Christian, like, like he uses it as a tool for your votes. It is not his beliefs. Like you can look at his history, his actions, like the way he's just been all yeah. of his life. It is not in good Christian faith, folks. Like, and I think most people don't get worked by that. Yeah, even, don't get worked. The, they don't get worked by that. I think most people actually are just like, well, whatever, he stands for it, so it's fine. He's not really a Christian man. They actually think it's kind of – some people I've seen it spun that some people think it's amazing that he stands up for Christians even though he's not such a devout Christian. That's how they spin it. Look, whatever. Okay. I, that's where I stand on this situation. I want to say one thing about these protesters. Looting, rioting, right? No one is pro that. No one, I mean, maybe someone, not me. I'm not pro that at all. I think, and I think most of that is not, in, watched, is not instigated by true Black Lives Matter protesters. They are, these instigators are from outside. They're agents of chaos. They're idiots who watch the Joker too many times, right? Who, yeah. Who, 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 believe, who are literally dropping off pallets of bricks this is proven this is proven there was video and there's every day there's so many new videos of this being instigated live you can see it with your eyes it's not a question right that's Do not bad get worked don't get worked idiots. don't get worked by these people who want you to make you think not to mention we don't we don't even know who these agents of chaos are they could be i mean it's it's extremely believable that Russia is involved. Uh, 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 extremely believe and, and Antifa also, yeah. People in Antifa are doing it, but they're not. They're not. Don't let these morons, these criminals, detract from the message here. Yeah. And, and the message here is that the police need restructuring. This three one officer has been charged with. Only third degree murder should be charged with first degree murder. Should be upgraded to first. Um, 
or I, I guess the way it breaks down, maybe second degree murder. Cause yeah, I, I, I think first degree is, yeah, premeditate. I mean, I don't know the law well enough to say what, what constitutes premeditation, but right. it's, I think first degree murder would mean that like he actively had a target for George Floyd in his back, you know, okay. but honestly you can even make an argument for that as well. But let's say, okay, second degree murder, but let's say it's not manslaughter. Okay. This no. guy was actively, uh, this guy was actively take choking the life out of this man. And if that New York Times video shows it to you in real time, it's insane. Okay, now, uh, people want change, and there's st we have not seen a president who's willing to at all budge or at all acknowledge there's a problem in the police, and we all know. We all know it. You see it. You know there's a problem. Listen, listen, listen to your black friends. They're telling you. What are they, lying? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. there's no question about it. It's just like we can never know what it's like to live as a black person, as non-black folks, but just, listen to them. What is in it for them to lie about their experience their entire life? It is not a secret, you know what I mean, to anyone right. that this has been going on since forever, you know? Oh, oh yeah, whole lives. And that people are not, are, are, are done. They're done. Our whole lives, our parents' whole lives. Like I've talked to my dad endlessly about it. You know, he's a cool guy. He's on the same page with everyone else. And it's just like, enough is enough. Like it's just been happening for so long. It's, if it's a mystery to anyone, why there's this outrage now there, it shouldn't be a mystery at all. It's, it's part of our history. Right. Absolutely. So anyway, okay. What does this mean? Yeah. I think that I saw someone make a post saying not, not, not all support is, and look, if you don't support what I'm saying here, then turn this off. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I, 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 if you really think that this behavior of this president and this and the police force over the past so many years, I mean, is okay, then you live on a different planet than I do. You know? Yeah. I, I and, think, and if you're walking into neighborhoods in bulletproof vests, fully armed. Right. With full authority and and you don't hold yourself to a higher standard. You don't think we can hold these people at all to a higher standard Then whatever. Turn this off. Fine. There's tons of other wrestling podcasts. Go 100%. listen to them and you don't have to whatever. You don't have to listen to us, you know? Yeah. And I mean, like there's so many arguments, so many asinine arguments, that, you know, oh, like other people have had it hard. It's like the point of this is not to negate anyone else's experience, like Native Americans, anything like this. The question here is like, and I've seen it so many times, it's like black people want to stop being killed by the police. Like that is what they are asking. And it's not just the police have to stop. It's this whole system of racism that is part of this country that, is still not over in 2020, you know? Right. And remember, the cops work for you. They work for the taxpayer. We that's pay the them. That's actually the bottom line here, is if your customers are complaining, listen to them. You know, you're... <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how to put it in plain, plain, more plain, simple language. Okay. So here's the deal. Support is does not... I saw someone say, it doesn't come in one form. If you are someone who doesn't feel comfortable protesting, uh, especially during a pandemic, I think that's completely understandable, you know? But if you want to support, right, um, a good way, this country runs on money, you know, find a couple dollars and you could donate. Uh, I've posted on my uh, Instagram, we'll probably post on the cow, at cow podcast, at damn black attack. Uh, a couple places you could donate. Me and my wife have donated to a bunch of them, uh, a, bu a bunch of funds. Um, but there's Minnesota Freedom Fund, George Floyd Memorial Fund, um, 
I run with Maud. I mean, there's a there's a million of great ones. Yeah. Uh, it's, and it's just hard look, to even if, know which one. Just choose. Just point, choose just one. Choose one. And, and if you're interested in supporting your local community's bail funds, it's easy to find. There's so many lists out there. You know, these protests are happening now in all 50 states, top to bottom. You can find a resource in your area where you can donate. Um, and then there's, you know, nationwide resources also. Um, we donated to the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, that's one that is applicable to all. And there's so many, you know, websites out there, like check your social media, like people are sharing links and you can find something that, you know, you can support and, you know, every dollar counts. Like you don't have to give $200,000 like Chrissy Teigen to make an impact. I think whatever right. is within your means is a meaningful contribution. Right. And um, if you can't donate there, are, uh, have conversations with people sign a petition, misguided, have uncomfortable conversations. Yeah. The point is like, let's get a little uncomfortable right now for the good so we can live and everyone can live more comfortable in America. Um, and yeah. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is kind of what we're saying right now. This is this is the message, and I figured it would be silly to come on here this week, talk about only you know talk about pro wrestling. Frankly, I haven't watched pro wrestling this week, uh, and so yeah, no. this is a pledge your support, you know, in any way that you can. There's and free ways too. You can sign petitions and talk to people, read a book, watch a movie. There's so many lists out there online now of things that you can do to start with yourself to think about what's happening and what you can do to make a difference. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it there this week. And uh, 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 and uh, who knows what will happen next week. Hopefully next week, talk about, uh, you know, Randy Orton again. And, oh, I mean, Randy Orton, who... I mean, if we're going to say anything about <laughs> wrestling, Randy Orton was the All Lives Matter guy. He was our example of All Lives Matter. And All the time. We, we, we cr criticized him as being a Blue Lives Matter, All Lives Matter guy. Right. And, um, and he has understood what this means is that, yes, we, all lives don't matter. All lives matter, uh, but they don't matter in, unless black lives matter. Right? And so, yeah, that's what he yeah, said. I think um, – yeah, I think, well, you know, maybe we'll keep this conversation going next week or maybe hopefully we'll be able to have some sense of peace. Uh, I think that comes from the top. Uh, also worth noting that Tony Khan, in response to Linda Hogan's insensitive, idiotic tweet, yeah. banned her and her husband from all AEW events. That's great. Um those you know some, some folks i mean uh granted i believe his father is a trump uh fundraiser guy but you know tony yeah. Khan himself not, it's it's hard to, I, that's why i'm purposely not trying to conflate these issues because i i follow a guy i don't even know his name some guy i did a show with a stand-up show back in the day and he has a bunch of a point of a points i barely ever agree with this guy yeah uh, i kind of find him a little arrogant but even he was like as a Christian guy, I was like, Trump holding up that Bible was wrong, you know? Yeah, it not, yeah. It not. So, you know, it's like I'm trying to find common ground. I'm not trying to d divide us even more than we're already divided. I'm just trying to simply point out the facts, and the facts are not good. And this, we have literally riots. In, uh, when was uh, right? forget. I'm sorry I said that. Protests, right? Because there's a riot element, but we said, again, that's the fringe. Most people are peacefully protesting in every major American city. Every uh, state has a protest. The map is all lit up. It, and at 50 states, we have right. people protesting this issue. And, yeah, anyway. So, uh, all right, we're going to leave it there. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. And stay safe. And, uh, you know, that's it. Have a, Just stay safe. Bye. Bye.